So in last lesson, we looked at ionic bonding, and we looked at why certain chemicals bond ionically. And in this lesson, we're going to talk about the other form of bonding, which is the covalent bonding. As a way to introduce you to this topic, you can see that there's going to be something to do with shared electrons. We're going to try and see what happens when we share electrons rather than just give them away, like in ionic bonding. So electron sharing. Not all substances in nature are ionic, obviously. You can see that just from, just from studying anything. Salt is not the same as gas, obviously. So you can see that ionic bonding won't encompass every substance that you see in nature. So other types of bonding exist, obviously other than ionic. So an alternative to the electron transfer in ionic bonding is covalent bonding. If some atoms don't really want to give away their electrons, they just want to you know, maybe loan them to someone, then covalent bonding may be an option for them. So covalent bonds form when atoms share electrons with, other, with one another to form a stable octet. So as you can see here, if you just ignore this one, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then likewise, if you ignore this side, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so you can see by sharing the electron, they sort of fool each other into thinking that both of them have eight electrons, even though they don't actually in reality. So it's sort of a way of fooling each other into thinking they have the right amount of electrons. So here's how we do it. So the simplest atom, let's take hydrogen, has one electron. You can see two hydrogen atoms come together, and then they share these two electrons, and now they become the hydrogen molecule. So as they come together, if I cross this one out, you can see it has two electrons. Now if I did that to the other side, this side, the white H has two electrons as well. They're both stable now. So that's why covalent bonding works. So in order to achieve stability, it only needs one more electron. So in order to get this one electron, it can share an electron with another H atom, as I mentioned before, to form the hydrogen molecule. So a covalent compound, so a covalent bond is a bond formed by the sharing of a pair or more pairs of electrons. So one or more pairs of electrons. Now covalent bonds generally form between non-metals. Okay? So that's how we generally see them, mostly with non-metals. Most gases present in our environment are formed by covalent bonding. So for instance, think about the gases in the atmosphere. You've got O2, N2, H2, F2, hopefully not this one, but maybe what else do you have in there? CO2. So all of these are covalently bonded substances. Okay. You can see that they're all also non-metals. So oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, fluorine, they're all non-metals. So that kind of fits our, our little statements here. So covalent compounds. There can be multiple covalent bonds between atoms. Let's take water. Water is a very good example. You can see that the oxygen with the X's has six electrons. Now it needs two more electrons to become stable. So what happens is it grabs a hydrogen atom and shares one of its free electrons with the hydrogen atom. Now the hydrogen atom thinks that it has two electrons, so it's stable. And on this side the same thing happens. So both hydrogens think they're stable. Now the oxygen in the middle, if you ignore the H's, cross out the H's, you can see there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it has eight electrons, so it's also stable. But you can see that the number of covalent bonds formed was two. There's one covalent bond here and one covalent bond here. So you can see that that's how things sort of panned out. Now double and triple bonds are not uncommon. Okay, so things like ethylene forms double bonds. Now a really common double bonded structure would be this. Now this is actually the familiar CO2. So you can see there's two bonds, which means that it's sharing four electrons between them. So there's two, the carbon atom will have X's and the oxygen atoms will have dots. So you can see that they're sharing four electrons between the carbon and oxygen at any one time. But if you sort of rub out the oxygens and you count out the electrons, you have eight. You can see that that works. Now double bonds include four electrons and triple bonds include six. So triple bonds are a bit rarer than double bonds, but they do occur. Nitrogen, for instance, has a triple bond. Ethine also has a triple bond. So they're sharing six electrons. 